I'll start us off by introducing myself. I'm Victoria, um, a current senior at Williams College, uh, majoring in stats and economics. And we have Diane and Emily here, who I'll pass off to to introduce themselves as well. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a freshman at Williams College. I'm hopefully maybe an art history major, maybe I'm double major in econ, and I'll hand it off to Diane. And I'm Diane Hart, and I'm the Senior Museum Registrar for Collections and Exhibitions at WICMA. Yeah, awesome. Diane has a really cool role, so I can't wait to get started. Um, I think maybe just for a crowd, do you mind introducing your role as a registrar and then um, diving into that, like what your role looks like specifically at the Williams College Museum of Art or WICMA? Sure, happy to. Um, I'm the museum registrar and I've been there for 27 years. And in the department is myself and we have an associate registrar, Rachel. She's been there 20, or she's been there 30 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we've both been there for quite a while. Um, the registrar is the person in the museum that handles kind of three air, main areas. It's logistics that have to do with the uh, art collection and the loans that we borrow, the documentation related to the collection and the digi digital assets and records. And um, under the logistics, the thing that um, my specialty is the shipping arrangements. That's one thing that I've done throughout my career and the, the part of it that I enjoy a lot working with the exhibitions. So it's, it's shipping arrangements to get objects to and from the museum. It has to do with um, acting as a courier and as escorting artwork to different museums that we may lend to or escorting loans back to the museum. Um, it also includes uh, making arrangements for loans from our collection that we're lending to another institution for an exhibition. And that's both domestic and international loans. Um, also uh, for shipping related to incoming purchase considerations or gift considerations when uh, alums um, or other friends of the museum decide they wanna make a gift to our collection, I would arrange to bring those things in. Um, also for if we purchase something from a gallery, I work with those people to bring the artwork in. and. Believe it or not, there's a lot of movement in a museum, bringing things in, things moving around. We also have um, storage facilities. We have one in Williamstown, and then we also use storage in um, um, another state. And so I would make those shipping arrangements to get our work back and forth. Um, the documentation side of it is um, we, we archive and we take care of all the original documentation relating to all the artwork, relating to all of our exhibitions that we've had and to all the publications that we've made relating to the work um, like exhibition catalogs, monographs, any kind of work relating to the objects in our collection. And we have records for, we have a f actual paper files for every piece of art in the collection. And that holds original deeds of gifts, letters of intent from donors, all sorts of research that our curators have done through the years, provenance records, which is the history of the artwork and who it's belonged to before we got it, um, all the exhibition records of every show that any of our pieces have been included in. And in addition to having paper records, of course, now we have digital records. So the digital archive and the dig digital image archive the registrars also uh, manage that. So we have a database for our collection and we track um, locations on that. We keep the history of the provenance, the history of the ownership, mm -hmm. um, the exhibition history, all the cataloging related to the artwork is kept in that database. And then we have resource space, which is a college owned uh, database for the images of every object. And so we work with Rachel and my colleague 
uh, the associate registrar, she handles that and um, rights and reproduction requests. Anytime that anybody in the whole wide world wants to reproduce an object in our collection, they come to us and they ask for a high resolution image so that they can use it for their projects. Um, so when I think about the registrar in the Williams College Museum of Art, I think about how my department is included in practically every aspect of the museum's work. We are sort of the hub and the spokes are all the other departments that we um, help and that we um, coordinate in different projects in order so that they can use either the actual object itself or the records pertaining to the object. This is a lot. We also, oh, I also manage the insurance on the collection too. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. That sounds really cool. And your role really sounds like so interesting. And you said that you've been the registrar for 27 years. So we were wondering, how did you first join WICMO? Well, it actually was a promotion for me. I started my career at the Virginia Museum in Richmond, Virginia, and I was an assistant registrar. And when I, I was there for five years and I learned um, about the different functions in the museum and how to do condition checks, how to um, identify objects and like research things to figure out the type of materials they were made out of. I, I have an undergraduate degree in painting and a master's degree in art history, but at that time there was, were no museum studies courses. So you did internships and then you would get your entry level job and you'd learn on the job. So I was there as an assistant registrar and I did a lot of exhibition work. And then I um, moved to the Yale University Art Gallery and I was the associate registrar. So I kind of moved up in the administration side of it. And then I learned more about um, shipping, working with cu international custom brokers there arranging for exhibitions to travel internationally as well as domestically. So it kind of moved up uh, the ladder in what the duties are. And I was the associate registrar working with the senior registrar. I didn't do a lot of permanent collection work at that point. I was mainly just doing outgoing loans and incoming loans and exhibitions within the museum. And I was there for five years and I knew I wanted to kind of be in charge of my own department and um, had come to the Berkshires to go to Tanglewood and the Williamstown Theater Festival and had been to the museum and the Clark and loved it up here. So when the job became available, I applied and I was given the position as the registrar. So it was like I was running my own department and I had um, an assistant and then I, I we were doing a lot of exhibitions at that point. We would do almost 30 exhibitions a year. So I focused on the exhibition work and Rachel focused on the permanent collection, bringing things into the collection and the documentation side of it. And as the years have gone by, um, my role has changed and I'm doing a lot more permanent collection work. Still doing the exhibitions, but we don't do as many exhibitions and we don't, we do maybe two or three kind of major loan shows a year, but we do a lot more with the permanent collection. And when we work with the collection, um, it, it takes a lot more time and a lot more people to be involved, to care for the collection objects and um, just making sure that they're housed correctly. And we've, we've had some renovation projects in the museum and we lost some of our storage space. So we have an offsite storage facility and we moved a lot of material there and it all had to be rehoused. So I work closely with the art handlers to care for the artwork and make sure that it's, it's safe and that we can handle it. And also the other part of the work that has changed over the years is the teaching with art for, for you know, all the students and, um, you know, Liz Gallerani, who facilitates that on our staff, works with me and Rachel and the art handlers to get the artwork out of the storage rooms 
and into the Rose study classroom. And so that has, has really, um, has been really fun to see that evolve and um, make more of our collection available to our students. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm so incredibly thankful for that one because I know I've asked Liz to pull a lot of pieces before and it's always so magical to see them. Um, and I think that makes us also wonder just for you specifically, what makes WIPA um, a unique or memorable workspace? Because, you know, you've stayed such a long time. Like, I guess there must be something, you know, special about the place that has kept you there. Well, there is actually. I think it's the combination of, of being in a, living in a rural area and mm -hmm. yet having all the great cultural aspects, in, including what we get at Williams College. We have a world-class museum. Our students are really smart. You guys do fantastic projects and you help us so much. And um, students work in my department with me and they work on special projects and do research for us. And it's always so much fun to, to be involved with our students. Um, and you wouldn't get that if you worked in a big municipal museum. You might have an intern, but you don't have your student interns and working on a college campus is so much fun. And there's just so many opportunities to learn from the faculty members and the, the way that, that we are kind of in the forefront for teaching with art. And it, it's, it really makes me feel like my job is important and my role in the museum is important because we can get our collection out for students and then you take what you learn and where, whatever you know you end up doing in your life what you've learned at Williams you know you may think about what you did at, at, at WICMA and classes you had where you worked with the art or artwork that you borrowed for the walls through the walls program which is the program where we lend artwork to our students to live with in their dorm rooms. So, I mean, that program in itself is just so gratifying and, and it's so much fun on the handout day when the students come and you pick your artwork for your dorm room. We just have a blast doing that, handing it over to you. It's, it's really great. Yeah, that sounds really incredible. Um, WICMA just sounds like such an exciting place to work at. Um, you talked about Walls or um, Williams Art Loan for Living Spaces Collection for those that don't know. Um, could you tell those a bit, those listening a bit more about um, what this program is like or um, you know, what do you think students gain from these experiences with art, et cetera? Well, the program is, um, was started by a previous director and we wanted to give our students the opportunity to actually live with art. Um, and, you know, I never grew up with original art in our home. And um, I just, I, you know, from working in the museum field, then I get to see it and, and learn about it. And what could be better than having a piece from the collection in, in your room and, um, what we did is we um, had a graduate student in the art history program acted as the original curator for the prog program, for the Walls program. And he went out and um, uh, did research with a group of undergraduate students as well. And they they formulated a collection to start. And I think we started with like, maybe we started with about 80 objects and they were mostly purchases, but we had some gifts. And it was this collection that was purchased and gifted specifically to lend to our students, which is kind of revolutionary when you think about it, sending artwork out into students' dorm rooms. And um, it was a way to, to um, help our students across the board, not just art majors, have a, um, um, experience living with art and, and learn about art directly. And, you know, we hope that eventually people, as they move on in their life, 
might um, become collectors themselves and then they might even offer some pieces from their own collection to the, the, the college and to, to the museum. And I, I know that my colleagues in other teaching institutions, they contact me constantly and ask about our WALS program and how it works. And, and a lot of other colleges and universities have started their own programs. Yeah, I definitely heard about that as well. Um, it was definitely a point of envy for my peers when they found out I could keep art in my room. I know you, we just discussed walls. Um, do you have any other memorable ex exhibits or events or other projects that you've worked on at WICMA? Um, given that, you know, so many season celebrations every year and so many experimental exhibitions, you know, what has been a really memorable kind of process for you? Um, it's kind of hard to think about what my favorites are because they're all so different and it's all been really fun to work on. But um, a memorable exhibition was an exhibition that we mounted in 2009 through 2010. And it was our Prendergast curator, Nancy Matthews. It was her exhibition. It was called Prendergast in Italy. And um, it was focusing on the American Impressionist uh, Maurice Prendergast and his work and the watercolors and the paintings that he did when he was over in Venice, Italy. Um, and he made, I think it was three specific trips over there. And we borrowed about a um, hundred works from institutions and private collectors and from our own permanent collection and Nancy made this exhibition that documented every location in Venice that the artists had painted. And they made a map and they pinpointed all the 105 artwork on the map. And the exhibition started at WICMA. It went to the Peggy Guggenheim Museum in Venice. And then it went to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. And I traveled as a courier with that exhibition so I took it from Williamstown to Venice and I rode on an open boat on the Venice, the Grand Canal with the crates right at my feet full of the Prendergast paintings. And we went on the Grand Canal to the wharf in front of the Peggy Guggenheim Museum and offloaded and they carried them all up into the palazzo and into the exhibition space. And it, I had never been to Venice and it, it was just, a magical exhibition and I worked on condition checking and making sure that everything got hung safely. And that was kind of one of the most exciting career trips I ever took. So that was really fun. And um, closer to home at the museum, I have to say that working with living artists, when artists come and do installations or you know, we mount exhibitions of their works, that is really gratifying and a great experience to see um, how the artists design their exhibitions and how they want to have their artwork installed and to work with them to make sure that everything gets into the gallery safely and, and with our great art handlers and getting and our curators getting everything set up the way the artists like to see it. And then when you have the opening and you know all the artist friends and family and students and our staff can celebrate these great exhibitions. And it's the same thing with the student exhibition that we do every year. Our student artists um, do the same thing. We work with them to, to get their show up and make sure that everything looks great. And that's, that's a great experience as well. Yeah, all these experiences sound so incredible and, you know, so like different and amazing. So in your opinion, how has WICMA specifically like influenced other parts of your life? What do you think your life would be like if you hadn't ended up here in the Berkshires? <laughs> I just can't imagine. I don't know exactly where I would live, but um, it's just great here because we have the combination of the culture and the outdoors. And I know personally, I've, I've done a lot of hiking and uh, I learned how to kayak here. And it's been really fun to, to have that recreational and outside part. 
plus like Tanglewood and the theater festival, seeing all these professional artists and, you know, there's so much to do and the campus is so beautiful and friends come and visit from all over the place and they always want to come to the Berkshires. Um, it's, it's a great place. And I, I think my profession has um, kept me organized and um, I'm always planning, you know, things in advance because that's sort of what I do for my job. And um, I guess I'm just the kind of person that, you know, takes things step by step. And um, I, you know, that side of it, plus working with all of the different people in the museum and the different departments. And, you know, we meet new people all the time and the, our colleagues in other museums are just so generous and helpful. And, colleagues at WICMA too. It's the camaraderie here is really nice and people help each other. And, you know, we were very, it's a very close knit group in the museum and in the museum world, um, working world too. People are so generous and you can call on your colleagues if you have questions and you don't have to feel, you know, it, like it's a, not a good question and people are so um, happy to help and um, want to want to see you succeed. I, I it's it's a great career. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I think just to wrap us up for today, if you could end us on a note on, um, you know, any advice that you'd have for anyone sitting in your shoes um, you know, who might have worked at a, as an associate registrar and is looking and thinking maybe they should pivot or for someone who is just interested in the work that you do and would be interested in working as a registrar, um, whatever kind of advice you would give or kind of suggestion um, you would share. Well, I, I feel like um, the registrar field is pretty wide open. And, you know, as I described, if, kind of the overview of what we do in our profession. There are different avenues you can um, specialize in if you want. Um, I think in the beginning to, to come in in an entry, if you come in in an entry level position is good to be a generalist and have a broad background in our history and the arts in general, I think is helpful and to know about artists materials is also helpful as you identify different types of objects. Um, and the other thing about the registration work is there's so many different museums. So if you're more interested in like history, you can work in a historical kind of museum or a historical home. If you're interested in fine arts, you know, some museums are just contemporary arts. Some museums are like our collection, which is kind of across, uh, across the board and many different types of artwork or, um, so there's a lot of variety. And then as you move up, you could specialize in different areas. Like if you're really interested in the imaging part of it, the digital imaging and digitization projects, rights and reproduction, you can go into that. Or if you're interested in taking care of objects. You can be a specialist in um, storage, uh, storage areas and, um, you know, rehousing of the artwork or conservation. Um, there's just a lot of different avenues that you can pursue and go into. Yeah, everything sounds like it would be like a whole exploration, a whole adventure. Um, I'll thank Diane for her time with us today. And I think with that, we'll conclude our interview. I really enjoyed it. And it's so nice to talk to both of you and good luck with the rest of the school year. Thank you. <laughs>